Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 109 of the Listening Time Podcast. Uh, At the time that you'll be uh, listening to this, or if you listen to this episode around the time when it comes out, it will be summer. And I hope that you're all having a good start to your summer. Uh, I'm excited for warm weather because at the time of recording this, it's the beginning of June and still uh, the sky is gray and we have a lot of wind here and it's been an uncharacteristically uh, bad year in terms of weather where I live. So uh, I'm excited for summer to finally come so that hopefully we can have some warm days and I can spend a lot of time outdoors. And so hopefully by the time you listen to this episode, it will be nice and warm and sunny here. And speaking of summer, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the 4th of July because this episode will be released right around the time of 4th of July, I think one day before it. So this will be a good topic to talk about. A lot of people ask me about the 4th of July and what people do, uh, what it really represents for Americans. So we'll talk about all of that. And don't forget that I have my ebook available now, the collection of three short mystery stories that I wrote, and it's translated into Spanish and Portuguese to help you understand the English version. So if you're interested in that and you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, then make sure to click on one of the links in the description below this episode depending on which version you want. And of course, if you want to support me and help this podcast, then please consider joining my membership, and that would be really helpful for me, and you'll get exclusive content. For example, if you become a Listening Time family member, you'll receive my advanced podcast episodes where I speak fast. So, If you want to practice with real English spoken at real speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member. And of course, you also have the transcript available, so you can use that and follow along if you need it and listen as many times as you need until you can eventually understand every word that I say without reading the transcript. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who's learning English, and please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about the 4th of July. So first, let's talk about the origin of this holiday. Why do we have a holiday on the 4th of July? Well, this is our Independence Day in the United States. So way back uh, in the beginning of our history, uh, the history of our country, we were originally 13 colonies. We didn't have these 50 states that we have now. We had 13 colonies uh, on the east side of the United States, and uh, during the early years, there were a lot of problems between the colonies and Great Britain. And so, of course, the colonies were um, an extension of Great Britain, so to say. Um, People came over from Great Britain to the United States At that time, it wasn't the United States. Uh, It was the 13 colonies in America. And so there were many problems, of course. And eventually, in 1776, uh, the 13 colonies uh, formally adopted 
the Declaration of Independence. And so this was formally adopted on July 4th, 1776. So this document, the Declaration of Independence, uh, is still today considered one of the most important documents uh, in history. So, of course, many countries have um, their own independence story, obviously, um, but this story of independence in the United States was something that was very revolutionary. It was something that uh, really changed the course of history. And the Declaration of Independence uh, really uh, represents that um, huge shift. Uh, in English, the word shift just means change. So this document uh, really represents that huge change, that huge shift, uh, because it also outlines a lot of the basic principles that people today uh, still champion. In English, we can say that someone champions an idea or champions a principle uh, when they believe in it and they preach it and uh, they um, really like that idea or that principle and they uh, adopt it, they champion it. So many of the basic principles that people today um, uh, really champion uh, regarding human rights um, can uh, be seen in the Declaration of Independence. And so that's one of the reasons why this is such an important document and this was such an important event. And then, of course, there's the fact that the colonies were separating from Great Britain. They were declaring their independence and becoming their own uh, country, kind of, <laughs> so to say. So, uh, of course, that was really important as well. And the first celebration of Fourth of July was actually just one year later in Philadelphia. And so uh, they were still at war during this time. Um, however, they still celebrated uh, the one year anniversary of the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. So there were uh, fireworks, uh, people lit candles, the whole city uh, was illuminated um, because of this. There were gun salutes where guns and cannons are fired uh, to um, commemorate something. Uh, in English, we can use the word commemorate uh, to talk about uh, remembering something with respect, right? To commemorate it. And then eventually it became a federal holiday in 1870. That's when the federal government actually adopted uh, the 4th of July as a holiday. So what does the 4th of July represent? So in the early years, this holiday was definitely a little more political than it is now. It can still be considered political in a sense nowadays. However, in the early years, um, the country or the colonies at that time were really um, proud of the fact that they were separating from Great Britain. They were declaring their independence and they were championing these basic values that they believed in. And so it was a more political holiday uh, and they were still um, thinking about their separation from Great Britain, of course, whereas nowadays um, most Americans aren't preoccupied with uh, Great Britain when it comes to the 4th of July. Uh, many people think about the original reason for 4th of July, of course, right? We think about 
um, the separation of the colonies from Great Britain. However, nowadays we don't have this um, political animosity with Great Britain. Uh, we don't have any problems like that. So that's not uh, the same nowadays. Um, however, uh, there is a lot of other significance uh, to this holiday nowadays. Um, of course, the 4th of July is the most patriotic day of the year. This is um, the number one time in the U.S. where you'll see patriotism on full display. In English, when we say that something is on full display, this means that you can see it very clearly. So uh, patriotism is on full display on the 4th of July, and I already did a full episode on patriotism, so I won't talk too much about that here. And uh, another uh, value that is championed by many Americans and um, is represented by the 4th of July is freedom. So of course, the 4th of July was originally um, uh, important because the colonies were declaring their freedom, so to say. Um, but nowadays, even though uh, we're not trying to uh, declare our freedom from some other empire or kingdom or something like that, uh, we still really value uh, this principle that we were born um, with the right to uh, act freely, do things um, the way we want to do them, and um, be able to live the life that we choose uh, and not have uh, some uh, other foreign body uh, controlling our actions or dictating what exactly uh, we need to do, things like that, right? So Americans usually uh, promote the idea of freedom, being able to uh, pursue your own uh, will, your own happiness, things like that. And then, of course, the 4th of July is still a commemoration of the past. Uh, on this day, a lot of people think about um, people that have died for the country, right? Soldiers of the past that have died fighting for America. And uh, people think about, um, of course, the origins of the holiday. And people reflect on many of these things from the past. So what do Americans do on the 4th of July? Well, Americans have barbecues, that's one thing. And at our barbecues, uh, maybe the most common type of food that people eat is hamburgers and hot dogs, probably. And then also steak and some other things. But I think when we think of barbecues, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, burgers and hot dogs, right? So this is really common on the 4th of July, and people might have a barbecue just in their backyard, for example, and they might also have like a swimming pool or something so people can come over, um, eat good food, go swimming, talk, uh, do other activities outside. This is really common. Uh, some people choose to celebrate the 4th of July in their backyard with uh, family and friends having a barbecue. That's really common. And Americans often go to the park or go to the beach or go to a lake or something like that. That's also really common. And um, when people go to these places, they do something similar. They might also have a barbecue. Um, they'll have to bring all of that stuff uh, to the lake or to the beach or whatever. And they might play some music. Uh, I think on the 4th of July, uh, the most common type of music that would be representative 
of this holiday would probably be classic rock. I was trying to think of this uh, before recording uh, about what music uh, you hear the most during this holiday. And I think classic rock is definitely the one that comes to mind. Uh, so you'll hear a lot of classic rock being played on people's uh, radios or whatever. Um, but you'll hear all types of music, obviously. And people might play sports on this holiday, especially kids, um, because on the 4th of July, uh, people want to spend the day outside. So, of course, that's a good opportunity to throw the football around, uh, throw the baseball around, um, play soccer, volleyball, whatever it may be. Um, this is a good holiday to do a little bit of that. And I remember playing a lot of sports on this holiday when I was growing up. So uh, you have a lot of fun uh, wherever you are. If you're in someone's backyard, if you're at the park, at the beach, wherever you are, there's a lot of fun on this holiday. It's definitely a very active holiday compared to others. Uh, we actually do a lot uh, outside, especially, and play and have fun and things like that. So that's really cool. And then there are also uh, parades. Uh, there are 4th of July parades, uh, just like there are for most holidays, I think, like Thanksgiving parades, Christmas parades, etc. So there are also 4th of July parades. So some people might go to a parade um, earlier on in the day, and then maybe later on, uh, they'll go somewhere else to some barbecue and all of that. And so uh, that's one thing that people might do. Um, another thing that's really important about the 4th of July is uh, the red, white, and blue. By the way, if we just say those three colors, red, white, and blue, what we're referring to is uh, the colors of the American flag and so we can say red, white, and blue to talk about everything flag-themed, um, everything American-themed, really. But this is the day of the year where you'll see flags everywhere, and you'll see these colors everywhere, even if it's not a flag. So you might already know that there are American flags all over the place uh, on normal days, but on the 4th of July, it's even more, right? You'll see uh, these colors everywhere you go, and people might paint something on their face even. They might uh, wear outfits that are completely American-themed. Uh, they might uh, wear red, white, and blue colors. Um, people uh, really like these colors because they want to show their patriotism uh, on this day especially. And then, of course, we have the tradition of watching fireworks. Uh, this is kind of the grand finale. Uh, in English, when we say the grand finale, we're talking about um, kind of the, the great end to something. So uh, we watch these fireworks at night, and then actually during the fireworks show, there's actually a grand finale during the show. So for example, at first you see the fireworks um, being uh, lit uh, slowly, one at a time, maybe two at a time, and you watch this for uh, some minutes, uh, some period of time, and then eventually, at the end of the fireworks show, there's the actual grand finale where they start shooting up tons of fireworks at the same time, and it creates this really cool display of uh, lights in the sky. And once they start doing that, 
you know that um, it's the grand finale and uh, the day and the fireworks are all coming to an end at this point. And then once that ends, then the 4th of July is over and everyone goes home. Uh, everyone uh, gets ready for the next day. So that's the, the end of the celebration there. And most people don't light their own fireworks. I know that's really common in other countries. In the US, some people do this, but it's not the majority of people, I would say. It's the minority, but many, many people watch the fireworks. Uh, wherever you are, you can hear fireworks around you, and there are many different fireworks shows. Um, there are always fireworks somewhere near you, um, but it's usually not just people in their backyard doing this. Some people do this, but the real firework shows are these big coordinated events where they shoot off really huge fireworks into the sky. So this is the time uh, during the year when Americans can actually um, uh, allow a little bit of noise like this, a little bit of uh, chaos <laughs> with these fireworks. Um, but besides the 4th of July, we don't really have a lot of other days where people would want this much uh, noise um, and uh, that type of celebration. Uh, it's really just on the 4th of July and maybe a little bit on New Year's Eve, but not really more on the 4th of July. So those are some of the things that people do on the 4th of July. I actually haven't been in the U.S. Uh, on this day um, at any point in the last seven years, I think. So it's been a long time since I've celebrated the 4th of July, um, but this year I will be in the U.S., so um, I don't have plans yet, but we'll see. I'll probably go somewhere outside and spend the day outside with my family and um, do some activities, watch the fireworks, all of that. Uh, when I was a kid, we uh, would always go to this uh, golf course that was right on the water, and the golf course would be shut down uh, so the public could go and spend the day there and watch the fireworks um, because they shot these fireworks off uh, right there in front of you, right on the water. So that was uh, always really cool. So maybe we'll go there again. I don't know. But uh, I think it will be fun to celebrate this holiday again because, as I said, I haven't celebrated it in a long time. So that should be fun. And in terms of how important this holiday is compared to other holidays, I would say that the 4th of July is in the top five holidays in the U.S. Um, people uh, will rank this differently depending on their preferences, but it's in the top five. It's an important holiday. Americans really value this holiday a lot more than people in many other countries uh, value uh, their Independence Day or National Day or whatever. Um, in some countries, people might really like that. But according to most of the people that I've talked to in different countries, uh, their National Day or their Independence Day is not quite as important to them as uh, the 4th of July is to Americans. So it's a pretty important day. All right, why don't we stop there for today? I hope this episode was interesting for you, and I hope it was good practice for your listening. Remember that if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, you can purchase my ebook, my collection of three short mystery stories written in English and translated into either Spanish or Portuguese. And you can become a Listening Time family member if you want my advanced episodes 
where I speak fast. And those links are in the episode description below this episode. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and a review and share it with anyone you know who's learning English. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.